Hey guys, welcome back to more AFK Arena. In today's video, the Witcher collab is finally here on the test server. I'm assuming it's going to be out fairly soon on the global server. We don't know exactly when, but we can look at them at least on the test server right now and see what they're doing. So first up, we have Gerald. Not Gerald. Geralt. Sorry, Geralt. <laughs> Even after I just listened to him say it, I still struggle to pronounce it. I don't know why. I suck. Yes, tell me in the comments. But hey, I, I, that's as good as I can do. I can put a recording of him saying it in here and hopefully that covers me. I just suck at saying it, okay? Thank you. All right, let's move on. Okay, so first off, ultimate skill. So we're going to just check out all his skills, take a quick look at his abilities. We'll do the same with Yennefer uh, and then we'll be back tomorrow after we get the trial version and we'll do a lot more testing with them. So first off, potion buff. When adrenaline, basically his energy is full, uh, he drinks a potion to buff himself, temporarily boosting his crit damage amplification by 25 points and his dodge by 120 points. During this time, while his adrenaline is above 400, he is immune to all control effects from enemy uh, when he's under the effects of the potion, he loses 120 general adrenaline points uh, per second. When he doesn't have enough adrenaline left, he takes some, some white honey to remove the buff, healing 80% of his max health and dispelling most of the debuffs. Now, in the skill ups, we go to 35 uh, crit, uh, crit am amplification and 150 dodge, and then he only loses 100 adrenaline points per second. Now, when we look through the rest of his kit, you'll find that he he has a lot of things tied into giving him extra energy so that he can basically sit in this form infinitely as long as he's got something to attack. So it's pretty nice. Uh, more enemies means he does it better. If Yennefer's on the team, he does it better as well. But basically, it's, it's kind of like get him to ult and then he just goes into this form for pretty much the whole battle unless, you know, you just can't hit anything or something like that. Moving on, we have Whirl. Performs a fast spin uh, to damage enemies within range multiple times. Each hit deals 200% attack rating damage. Uh, he gains additional 30 adrenaline or energy uh, per enemy hit. When Yennefer is an ally, his adrenaline recovery rate is increased by 10%. Uh, and with the skill ups, we do get the 40 uh, energy or adrenaline per enemy hit, which if you're doing a nice little AoE. It's a good chunk of energy and that's where I talk about it's sort of like just trying to keep him in this mode of this and while he's above that 400 he's immune to CC which is really nice. Moving on from that, we have Rend. Performs a forward-facing heavy slash to enemies within range, dealing 230% attack rating damage that ignores enemy defense. Damage scales with his adrenaline value and can be increased by up to 30%. So at max adrenaline or energy, he gets an extra 30% damage on top. Uh, if Graveborn or Hypogean enemies uh, are within range, within the skill's range, he will attack with his Silver Sword, additionally reducing their energy by 400 points. It's a pretty decent reduction in energy. While using his Silver Sword, he is immune to control effects. Uh, then we get some increase on the, the the bonus damage. We get some increase on the base damage. Uh, and then successful hits with his skill increase his haste by 10 points for 25 seconds. The effect can stack up to three times. Not too bad, bit of a buff we get on that as well. Then we go into battle signs. Uh, he uses a, uses different witcher signs during battle. Uh, the first one, he places a magical trap uh, at the start of the battle that lasts for 35 seconds. Enemies within the trap have their dodge reduced by 200 and haste reduced by 30. And this is one, he sort of just places it sort of in front of him at the start of the battle and just sits there. Once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, the next one, when taking damage above 10% of his max health, he quickly casts uh, Quen to temporarily block all attacks. Now, from the little bit of testing I did, it feels like it's about two seconds of blocking attacks. Uh, then gains a shield equal to 12% of his max health for five seconds. The cooldown is eight seconds on this one. And then the final one is he casts uh, Arad, Ard, Ard, man, I suck at these names, Ard in front of him uh, to knock down enemies within range, dealing 206% attack rating damage. Now, that one does get buffed later on when we look at his furniture, I believe it is, uh, and it includes a freeze, which is nice. 
nice. Uh, then we get the skill ups, we get some extra damage, we get some extra dodge reduction and haste reduction from that one. Um, oh yeah, and each time he casts one, he restores an additional 150 adrenaline points. Once again, like his skill two, which gains him adrenaline for enemies hit. This one's going to gain, gain him extra adrenaline. This is going to be based off his 60 engraving those that you need to get to get that effect. But like I said, once you get that, I feel like he's just going to sit in his alt form uh, basically forever. So moving on from that, we've got the signature item. Increases the attack range of Whirl and Rend. Every time he uses Rend, he increases his normal attack and Whirl damage by 10% for 25 seconds, stacks up to three times. Now it goes up to 12% for three times and 15% for three times. So you can increase his normal attack and Whirl damage by up to 45%, which isn't too bad. Then at level 30, for every enemy Whirl hits, uh, his crit rating is increased by five points for 25 seconds, which can be stacked up to five times. So he ends up rolling on with a fair bit of crit um, and just basically gets a lot more crits and obviously when he's in this form he has his crit amplification so if he's always critting he's getting a lot more damage because his crit amplification is up there as well moving on from that we've got his furniture when successfully blocking damage with quen nearby enemies take 80 percent of the block damage damage cannot exceed 350 percent of his attack rating i wish this 350 percent was a bit higher uh because like then like when you look at really high deficit pushing in campaign uh, it'd be really nice if he got immune for two seconds, but enemies were hitting him for that much that he just reflects and, die, and they die. But we are capped on the damage, unfortunately, which it's a very, fairly low cap at 350. I'd like to see like 800, but you know, I, I'm asking for a bit much. Uh, next up, we have level nine, enhances Ard uh, with a piercing cold mutation, increasing the range while inflict inflicting freeze on enemies for 3.5 seconds. This is really nice. I like this nine furniture. I think that is a really solid one to get him some extra CC. Um, and also the extra range, which is going to be good. So that is Gerald. Uh, sorry, Gerald. <laughs> yes, I suck. Uh, okay, so let's go here. Let's watch it. Put a bit. So wait, let's let's start again. That was a bit too quick. It was on four times speed. So you'll see he puts this this trap on the ground, and it just stays there. And its, it's position is based on where he is as well. Um, but yeah, any enemies that walk in that will be have their haste reduced and their dodge reduced. So there we go. He does his ult. Um, and then he's going to do his slashes, his whirl and rend. And as you can see, he just keeps getting more energy back. And that bit, that ability there where he knocked down, that's the one that enhances to actually have a freeze on it. So we'll show you guys that one as well because the engravings don't kick in until here. Um, so we'll just put him in the front row. We'll put in, let's just put Brutus, put Yen, we'll put you, we'll put you. We'll just put some support in there. But I just want to show you guys this. So I just want to show you that ability when he uses it. Here it comes and there you go there's the freeze and you see it hit the um the cirrus as well so it's got that cone range as well and it's going to push them back and freeze them which is quite solid so the knockback in this is pretty decent so that is going to be him now we'll go ahead and take a look at yennefer and like i said we'll definitely do a lot of testing tomorrow when we get the test version of these guys so first off yennefer Ultimate ability. Uh, she dives into the most crowded area of enemies and slams into the ground, dealing 300% attack damage, attack rating damage to enemies within the radius and imprisoning the hit enemies for three seconds before teleporting herself back to the original position. While this skill is active, Yennefer is invulnerable. So this one, from what my, my little bit of testing, it seems like when the imprison is more of a rooting effect, they can still do stuff. So what you'll find is when she uses this, she's got another passive, which we'll see in a sec, but she's going to teleport. She's going to charm the enemies and then they're going to be rooted and attack each other. So that's pretty much what I'm seeing the synergy with her ultimate is. Then we move on to this one. Passive. Yennefer enchants enemies within a given range around her for two seconds, during which they will start attacking each other with normal attacks. This effect can only be triggered once every 10 seconds. If Gerald is an ally, he inflicts 20% additional damage to the enchanted enemies. Now, this one, you can see that it goes up to a four second enchant on an eight second cooldown, which isn't too bad. Now, I'm not too sure this will take more testing on how this works, whether it means she can 
can, she's like, she activates this effect as soon as someone gets close enough and then she can't activate it again for the eight seconds or whether it's like each enemy has their own eight second cooldown. I believe it would be the activation on her side, but I'm still keen to test this a bit more and find out. Um, and you know, it's pretty good with lunges as well. Like, you know, if, if she's fighting against a lunging enemy, um, it means she's going to fear them as soon as they lunge at her, which isn't too bad either. Uh, provided she doesn't get one shot by Nathalia or something like that. Moving on from that, uh, the next ability, Yennefer casts a frost and thunder magic in turn. I don't know why I said a frost and magic. Put in an extra letter there. Uh, frost magic channels a line of ice shards and Ice Storm dealing multiple hits to enemies in front, each hit causing 180% attack rating damage and knocking them back while stunning them briefly. Thunder Magic summons Thunder on enemies in front, dealing 220% attack rating damage and stunning them for two seconds. So it's not too bad. Then we get some extra damage and then the 30 engraving is gonna be that Thunder Magic damage increased by 20% with each additional enemy in range by up to 60%. So getting a bit of extra damage if you're hitting a bunch of enemies with that thunder next ability magic barrier creates a magical barrier at the start of the battle reducing 20 percent of the damage that allied heroes on the allied side take from enemies on the enemy side of the battlefield so enemies on the enemy side deal less damage to allies on the allied side but lunges are going to do the same damage but the cool thing with her is that she can send those lunges back um moving on from that the barrier lasts for 24 seconds and disappears upon yennefer's death death uh while using this skill she is immune to control effects really nice having that immunity um then we get da skill ups damage reduction increase to 25 percent for every 12 seconds the barrier lasts it deals 200 percent attack rating damage to all enemies within it and knocks them uh back to their side of the battlefield which isn't too bad uh and then 60 engraving is going to be that that happens every six seconds and it deals 300 percent to all enemies and knocks them back to their side of the battlefield so honestly the 60 60 engraving doesn't seem like the most important thing, it would be handy, but it doesn't seem like a must have, which is really good. Whereas Gerald's 60 seems really nice. So, you know, that's the trade off there. Moving on to the signature item. Increases energy recovery by 30% for allied heroes within the magic barrier when they suffer damage. So this can be quite nice fighting against ranged heroes and stuff like that. You know, you're getting hit, but you're getting that extra energy, which is nice. Uh, that goes up to 40%. Uh, and then at level 20, each allied hero in the magic barrier increases the damage reduction of the magic barrier by 5%. So I'm assuming this is allied, when it says allied hero, I'm assuming it's only heroes, so you can only get up to five. I'm assuming extra minions and stuff don't count, but it's still not too bad that you can get an extra 25% damage mitigation. I mean, it's okay. It's not bad. Not bad at all. And then at level 30, uh, magic barrier duration is suspended when no enemy is within it. So it's what it, whatever the, the duration of it was, which is the 24 seconds. If there's no enemies in it, I think it doesn't start counting down that 24 seconds until the, an enemy comes in. Say they get knocked out after two seconds, then you're at 22 seconds and they wait for an enemy to come in before it starts counting down again. That's how I understand that ability. Moving on from that, we've got the furniture. When Yennefer is in the back line of the allied side, it greatly increases the range of frost magic, which is really nice. That's going to be the one that's going to knock them back and also stun, uh, give them those brief stuns. And then this one, when Yennefer receives melee damage from an enemy hero, she teleports herself and the enemy to their respective back lines and resets the Sorceress Wrath cooldown, which is, which one's that? That's this one. So it resets the cooldown of this one, which is your frost magic. So there's some fun things that I'm going to experiment with with that one. But it's going to reset that one, which does like the ice attacks and the thunder attacks, the lightning attacks. Uh, this effect can only be triggered once every 12 seconds. Yennefer is immune to control while using this skill. So... This one I think is going to be really, really nice. I feel like you can start her in the front row. She, she does give the extra effects from her signature item when she's, or, or from, sorry, from the three furniture, was it? When she's in the back row, because she teleports to the back row, you could start her in the front row, copper melee attack, you teleport them both back, and away we go from that. So I think she's going to have a lot of cool synergies and a lot of cool strategies that you can use her with. So we'll have to wait and see. So let's go in and take a look at her abilities and then we'll call it a day and we'll come back tomorrow with some more testing. So here we go. That's her placing the shield and she does like a basic attack by the look of it. There's that ice that comes down. And I don't really see the, 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 the problem is I don't often, so there's the, there's the ice. 
I don't really see the lightning, but that that's her ultimate, and you can see he's got the the, the heart above his head. So that's going to be her main like sort of synergy that she has is with her ultimate, and that was the the thing dis like that was the twelve seconds of the uh, the bubble, and then it pushes them back. But when she uses that like the synergy of her ulting into put controlling them, and then they just attack themselves, is really nice. So you can see the heart on top. You don't attack allies, but I struggle to see the lightning damage that she deals because it says. It, Let's have a look. So that. And, I, and I, I struggle to see the lightning. I, unless I'm just blind, you guys let me know if I'm being stupid. There, see, they, I saw her do the lightning there. So it's like, I feel like the lightning doesn't always happen straight after the ice. So here's the ice. Oh no, that, that was the ult. So there's the, there's the ice. Let's see if she does the lightning. And this is my thing. I, I feel like the lightning is on like a bigger cooldown. Because I only saw it. There it is. There's the lightning. But yeah, the ice seems to happen a lot more than the uh, the lightning. But that is that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for Yennefer and and Geralt. <laughs> we got there. We got there with the name. I know I suck at it. But I at this stage, I'm thinking Yennefer is going to have more options. But I'm still keen to test Geralt. Uh, Geralt. Sorry, uh, I'm still keen to test him. I feel like he is going to have some really strong utility with his invincibility um, and the fact that he can go into like this berserker mode for a long period of times. It just depends on how well he scales. It doesn't look like his damage is going to scale enough. I feel like he doesn't get enough buffs um, to his damage dealing capabilities to be in there. He does have a little bit of control with the freeze. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. We will have to wait and see, but I'll definitely test them both. Personally, at this stage, I, I'm picking Yennefer as my top pick, but hopefully they're both awesome. Maybe we just use them as a team together because they do have pretty good synergies together. Not just the synergies of they buff each other's things when they're together, but I, I feel like they do work pretty well together. You know, you put Yennefer front, him behind, avoids a little bit of damage. She gets hit. She teleports back. He comes in. Then he's going to deal some extra damage. She's going to reset the cooldown on her ice. She's going to stun them with ice. He's going to come in. He's going to use his sigil to freeze them. Uh, I feel like I feel like they just have some good synergies in their play style. So we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, guys, that is going to be for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.